you saw the title. You know we're here to talk Splatoon. January 17th is bringing a brand new mid-season patch to Splatoon 3 focused on weapon rebalancing. The original claim given to us at the end of November was that this would be focused on weapons introduced this season. But uh, there was nothing done to the Snipe Rider. Whoops! You know what did get a buff though? The Splattershot Nova! With a 19% paint increase and a minus 10 points to special buff, this thing is about to be firing killer whales more than ever before. <laughs> Think about it, you'll be basically getting your whales somewhere between 5 and 20% sooner if you play your cards right. The 5% less points to special combos great with the big paint increase. Point sensor your foes, and then aim your whales perfectly for maximum annoyance. Nintendo cooled down the first global special of the game, aka good old missile, so they had to make sure you had something else to be afraid of. Whale is a forced displacement special. You first kill a whale, and other players have to move. Waiting it out means a free ticket back to spawn. Of course, Killer Whale still isn't a very quick killing nor a dangerous special as long as you move around the right way. But more whales on the field mean more opportunities to be caught off guard by it. And that ship damage stacks up if those whales are flying at you during a firefight. It starts to sound like the argument that people had over missile, where they were like, oh, just dodge the missiles. <laughs> Will increased whales be enough to stop Crab Tank, though, is the question. With Crab Tank lasting a second less, having to dip away from whale will lead to a good amount of time lost if you're trying to use the long-range rapid-fire mode. But this requires a whale player to be ready with a whale every time they see a crab, if that's the kind of counterplay they're looking for. The meta, for those watching that are sometimes confused by the term, is essentially the weapons that people deem to be the best choice. Is the value of spamming whale worth having less crab tank on your team? Is something else more worthwhile? Would you rather play whale over playing crab? What about the now improved triple ink strike, once deemed not great due to its poor damage output, but now possibly much better? I hope that damage increase is applied to Salmon Run 2. We gotta keep those scrappers off the field, you know? Nintendo lovingly gave a special point buff to the 52 gal as well, giving it a better chance at pushing out Killer Whale. More whales means more opponents to pick off when they come running. Given the 52 is already quick time to kill, that's just a plus. The bamboo is learned receiving better ink consumption means it can afford to put more paint on the ground for Whale while gearing up for its next engagement. And I know you want to hear my thoughts on the machine. As someone who has put a lot of time into the sloshing machine, I can tell you with certainty these nerfs will scare people off from using the weapon. However, the fundamentals of the main weapon itself remain unchanged. None of the changes have affected the weapon's range or damage, the spiral hitbox, or the way the sloshing machine moves. If they were to take the indirect damage of the sloshing machine from 35 to anything under a 3 shot, let's say 32 damage, uh, then we would have a problem! But we don't! Please don't listen to me, Nintendo! The kit and weapon is too fun for me to drop, even if it's nerfed into the floor anyway. Which it's not, by the way. If I can play a machine for 5 years of Splatoon 2, I can play it with one less slosh. <laughs> What you may see in high level is people gravitate towards other splash matic counters, such as the now buffed Tenetech and 52 gal, which will lead to less machines on the field. But it will still shred the common low-range shooters like your aerosprays, splashes and splooshes from long distance, and you can still catch folks off guard when they're pushing back up from base. And you can still fling ink to get everyone off the tower with old machine, so don't expect it to fully disappear. On top of that, Machine and Slosher in general still are some of the best weapons to kill players standing on top of a crab, so you'll still see them. The community is very split on how they want patches to be handled by Nintendo. However, I firmly believe that taking things slow is better. Options are being provided to encourage players to try out things that aren't the splash matic The Nautilus getting a longer firing duration is fun. Not has the range and tricks to fight a variety of shooters, and if the next path provides a more damaging kit, we might see Nott enjoyers very happy very soon. 
This change is a small step in the right direction without making it too strong right away in the process. Another weapon that's enjoying small steps in the right direction is the Big Swig Roller. Changing the minimum damage from 30 to 35 on the horizontal swing means that players can get a guaranteed 3-shot kill as long as all the ink hits their opponent. That's a lot more consistent than before and takes a fair amount of pressure off the Big Swig. Additionally, this can further guarantee an indirect and a direct hit from the roller's flick to get a kill. Given the minimum damage of 35 and maximum damage of 70 now easily clears the 100 HP threshold at 105. Does it make the big swig as efficient at killing as the carbon roller? No, but that was never its job. The big swig denies areas and can help further finish the job when working alongside its teammates now than ever before. Just wait until it has a bomb and hopefully not angle shooter on its next kit. They could do it, technically. Imagine 35 damage sub, 35 damage slap, and then throwing another angle shooter to finish the job. Evil, hilarious, and a bit mean to the poor big swig, which would have been a lot of fun with a proper bomb. Their buff also benefits the slosher deco. Now there's less in the way of a slosher deco from comboing a slush with a throw of an angle shooter, given that before, a bit of sub defense up would stop that combo in its tracks. Players without that much sub defense up can also get three shot by angle shooter throws in general now, giving everybody from the splatter shot pro to the jet squelcher more tools to pick out opponents until they're ready for a more appropriate push opportunity. These weapons aren't affected much by the killer whale increase either, because as a shooter class weapon, they can just reposition and keep firing. Important thing to note. I'm also curious to see if the changes in Brella outlined in the patch make a big difference. We know Brella still doesn't output enough damage to hold its own too well in the average fight, but if Brella players at least have their weapon functional, the Nintendo can start collecting better usage data on the weapon for those who do pick it. Maybe they can finally start to buff it when the next patch comes around? Please? If future mid-season patches are willing to make as many changes as this, then we basically can have two patches every three months that can alter the metagame a bit. Something that applies to every single patch that you'll probably see when you load up the game is you might see some very common weapons missing. The first few days after a patch, people are gonna come online to experiment and try out what has changed more than what we see is unchanged. We'll be able to see in due time how things balance out usage-wise. While Splash might have evaded a nerf this time, if buffing other shooters doesn't cause its usage to come down, it would be in the devs' best interest to do something about the Splash this time. I am doubtful they'd change its accuracy, since that's the point of the weapon. They could mess with its mobility, like changing it from lightweight back to regular. If the splash matic is nerfed too far though, and other shooters are buffed too much to try and fill that vacuum without appropriate competition, it will unfortunately lead further into a shooter-dominated metagame. Wee! Just remember, the average player can still enjoy what they want, whether that's the 52 gal or a big swig roller. Given we're only four months into the game, it's good to see the devs are trying. Hopefully things keep going the way we want as time goes on. Only time will tell. Thank you for listening, and if you want to hear more from me in the future, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you can see what I put out next. Have a good one.